Master of Ceremonies and also I'm representing the minister. Um, I acknowledge him in his absence. Um, Dr. Dlamini, head of the CSR. Um, and then the many diplomats, and I've, I've realized that there are, they haven't been listed in by speeches, but um, I also want to acknowledge you and um, I see the, the Chinese embassy representatives are here and uh, I, I um, am sitting there with uh, the ambassador of Belarus and <clears throat> Poland, I think. I think he stepped out of the room. Um, so greetings to diplomats, greetings to um, African diplomats as well. Um, I think it is wonderful that we're coming together as an international science community in this way. Um, now, I'm head of the National Science and Technology Forum. Um, we are a multi-stakeholder forum. Um, we represent more than 120 organizations in South Africa. So it includes the research councils, um, the universities, state-owned enterprises, businesses, NGOs, and um, professional societies. It's a huge range. And in a way, we can say those are the players in the national system of innovation. And all of them are important. Um, to Mr. Magnoni, um, I'm very glad that uh, the business, uh, Black Business Council is here um, and representing business because it is a great temptation as government, I think, to um, concentrate on government to government relationships and multilateral relationships, but not to take society with them. Um, so thank you, um, Mr. Dutue, for in inviting me here today and um, giving a platform to civil society. Now, I was thinking about civil society, um, and it is a tricky thing because if you're in government, you have to be diplomatic. You have to be polite and make sure you don't say anything wrong. But civil society is all kinds of people and they're like a horde of cats. You can't organize them. Um, civil society can also be quite rude and critical and demand change. But that is a good thing. And maybe we need to hear civil society more loudly at platforms like this, at gatherings like this. It's offensive sometimes, I know. You know, when people demand you must institute renewable energy now, and they don't take into account that there are many, many um, workers on, um, in the coal industry and the coal-fired uh, power industry. That's the kind of thing, but I think that we need that kind of dialogue as well. Um, many people um, have individual collaborations overseas. Um, so you don't necessarily engage with the governments of other countries, but um, academics have collaborations with their counterparts in other countries all the time. There is a great deal of traffic in those kinds of communications. And that is civil society. Academics are also ordinary citizens and they don't make um, the kind of decisions that governments make, but it's important that they are collaborating across borders. Now we're in a very difficult time. Currently, there are great tensions internationally. Um, it is difficult to decide how to respond to that. Um, we have a very measured response by our, by our government, and I fully support that. I think it's, it's correct. Um, but when you look at civil society, there's an outrage about what is happening in Ukraine. And so how do you, how do you negotiate that? How do you um, talk about collaborations, academic collaborations with Russia? And some people will be shouting, some people in civil society will be shouting, don't have anything to do with them. Government will say, we have diplomatic ties with Russia, we'll continue those. But now the interesting thing 
is that diplomacy actually allows people to firstly understand each other. They know each other. And once you know someone, if you talk to someone extensively, there is greater understanding and the possibility of solving problems and reaching peace is greater. I continue to believe that. Um, it's, it's a very difficult issue for me, I'm sure for many people sitting here as well. But diplomacy is critically important. You know, when UNESCO was formed, it was in the interests of peace. And World War II was not even over yet when countries came together and said, we need to have a forum in which we can collaborate around science, education, and culture. And so they founded UNESCO with the express purpose that this will lead to peace. In that way, I think that science diplomacy is also a contribution towards peace. Scientists find it, I think, a lot easier to work with each other, with their counterparts in other countries. Um, I mean, politicians and, and, um, and uh, state officials all have, their, have their channels. They have, you know, they're working within a framework. Um, politicians will, will take a particular stand um, and that will govern how they interact with, with overseas counterparts. But for civil society, it's just a case of, can we find each other in this scientific collaboration? And I think that helps enormously for, for the promotion of collaboration and peace and progress. I, uh, I wrote a speech which is much too long, so I'm not going to keep you much longer, you're, you're, you're free to, to see it and read it separately. Um, I like the quote that was uh, given um, on, the, on the flyer as well as in the introduction of Albert Latuli, that what we do should not threaten existence. And again, this is a very thorny issue when we create weapons based on science, those are designed to extinguish existence. When we create our power networks and our power generation, those are threatening to, to wipe out our existence. There are all kinds of responsibilities that come with the practice of science and the development of technology. And I want to suggest that that is an individual question, that somehow you as a scientist have to work out how you negotiate that, how you form your partnerships, and what kind of limits and boundaries do you, do you set up. Your science has to be open, that can't be helped. But Somehow, you have to think of the effect of that science and what it will be used and have a voice when it is used incorrectly. I think we should follow the, the example of Albert Einstein, who, um, whose science, of course, was used to develop the atom bomb in America. And he and other scientists made it very clear to the president at that time that they are totally in opposition to using the atom bomb. But the politicians went ahead, the president went ahead, and caused untold tragedy to Japan. So we're at that kind of interface, I think, as, as scientists and people who are working around scientists like myself, of you support the science and you support the, the technological development, of course, but then people are human. People will use those as they see fit. Right, that's just a big question. I have no solutions to that. 
I just, in concluding, want to make the, the remark that there are things that science hasn't solved yet. And one of them is the kind of competitiveness for survival that people have among themselves. So if you have a huge dispute over resources, you go to war. It's not the best way of solving the problem, but somehow humanity has that frailty that time and again, we will go to war over resources. Can science please solve that problem? The other thing is very closely related to that is dealing with people who are different from yourself. Um, we have a huge problem in South Africa with xenophobia. Um, we have still um, lagging problems with, with racism. And it's, there seems to be something, um, can I say human about it? Not I ideal humans, but it seems to be another human frailty. In sociology, they, they look at those kinds of um, situations where, where there's discrimination and where um, you regard, where you regard um, someone else as being so different from you, yourself that you cannot see yourself in that person. So, I don't know, this is the domain of social science, I know, but somehow it could speak into the, that dilemma of the scientists and the technological innovators who realize that their inventions and their discoveries are being used for ill. So that is it, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Congratulations on this initiative and uh, best wishes from the NSDF with, um, with this um, science diplomacy capital initiative. Thank you.